Welcome to the Messy Mind Podcast, a show to support you in seeing that messiness can lead to your light bulb moments. I'm your host, Tammy L. Davis. Have you ever felt like you're swimming against the current sea of mediocrity? So in today's world, it seems like doing just enough to get by is often celebrated more than going the extra mile. And there's a quote from Paula Abdul that Brendan Bouchard always says, and it's, there's no traffic after the extra mile. But if you're anything like me, someone who craves depth, has a high attention to detail, and really experiences the pure satisfaction that comes from doing your absolute best, this trend that we have going on right now can be disheartening. And the reason why I want to share and talk about this today is let me just go into quick story time. Many of you all don't know that for the past 15 months, I have been sharing an office space with my husband. We are in the midst of a full home renovation and have been for for probably a little over a year, 15 months. Before I moved into my office, which is upstairs, his office is downstairs, I wanted to have this accent wall. Of course, Instagram got me with showing, you know, how easy the wall could be done. My husband had just finished laying all the hardwood floors in the house, and I said, well, maybe we can use the remnants. Look, I say we. Maybe we can use the remnants to build my accent wall that's going to be in my office. My husband and I, we know our strengths, and one of our strengths is not working together. He does the heavy lifting. I come in, I'm the cleaner. We have formulated that over the years, and it works well. He might ask me here and there, screw this, hand me this drill, whatever the case may be, but I knew I didn't want to do this wall with him, and I didn't want the burden of him to, I don't want the burden of him to have to do this wall. We outsourced it, meaning that we hired someone to put up the accent wall. And I had seen their work on this person that we hired, this company, I had seen their work on Instagram. And again, like I said, Instagram got me again. When they come in and they start to do the wall, the quality that I had seen on Instagram was not the quality that I was getting on my wall. And thank the Lord, my husband is a contractor and he's so talented. And he just, what was, he was only supposed, my husband was only supposed to serve as the helper. And this contractor, I'm putting it in quotes, was supposed to be the lead, but it ended up switching. My husband really did 90% of the wall and this contractor did the rest. But there was a checkpoint. And my husband, before they finished, asked me to come up and take a look at it. And this other contract, I can't even call him a contractor. Handyman, maybe that's a, I call my husband a contractor, I'm gonna call this person a handyman. This handyman really thought that the work that they had done thus far was good. And I thought it was okay. And I'm saying to myself, why is being okay enough? Like, how are we operating in this world where okay is okay? Okay is fine. Needless to say, as it got halfway through, it was still mediocre. Once the job was finished, them doing their part, it was mediocre. And they were cool with it, which again sparked me to really want to share that story. And I want to share my journey towards embracing excellence in a world that often settles for less. I want to share with you some of my personal tips on staying detail-oriented and really how to shine in an environment that might not always appreciate the extra effort. Because like Paula Abdul said, there is no traffic after the extra mile, and that's relevant. Let me tell you, number one, why I choose excellence. And it's something that my husband and I have instilled in our children, and I'm hoping that they're embracing it. For me, number one, why do I choose excellence? It's three buckets underneath that. First, personal growth. For me, aiming for excellence is about pushing my limits and constantly learning. I like to say there's nothing like mastering a new skill or refining an old one. And with that, I have respect for my craft, whether it's the work that I provide for my clients, even doing daily chores. I literally just finished dust mopping the hardwood floors or doing things in a way, well, 
that really is showing respect for the task and respect for myself. And then the third bucket as to why I choose excellence is the joy of achievement. Now, let me tell you, there's nothing like nailing a project or a task with all the little tiny details in check. It's a feeling like no other. So I get excited about that. Tip number two, how do you deal or or offering you tip number two in dealing with the just enough culture? Navigating in a world where okay is often good enough can be tricky, but here's what I do. I create my own standards. I've learned to define over the years what excellence means to me in my work, in my relationships, in my personal projects. It's not about being perfect, but it's about being proud of what I do. It's critical to have clear communication. When collaborating, I really try my best to make sure that I express why details matter And I'm hoping when I share why details matter, that really inspires a shared vision of quality and how do you deal with a just enough culture is walking the talk. I believe, we believe in the Davis household, and I know this also comes from my mother and my father, you've got to lead by example. By maintaining high standards, I hope to encourage others to raise their bars too. I keep focused on the little things that make a big difference. You definitely want to stay organized. A tidy workspace, and I'm loving my new workspace. And at the end of the day, I tidy it up. I put my, I make sure that everything is in its place, even down to putting the highlighters and the pens back into the holder, because a tidy space and a clear mind are my secret weapons. You will be amazed on how physical clutter can cloud our attention to detail. I would also say that pacing is key. I've learned that rushing is the enemy of detail. How many times have you just had a situation where you're like, let me just get this done. And then you look back and you're like, this is a mess. So you want to make sure that you allocate proper time for the task because that is going to make a world of difference. And you definitely want to make sure that you constantly reflect and revise. I'm constantly reviewing my work which has been a game changer. By incorporating self-feedback and constructive criticism from others, they really do serve as guides, which have served to be golden. Now, sometimes choosing excellence also means facing resistance. And you get to ask yourself, how do I handle this pushback? This is how I handle pushback. I keep calm and I stay professional. When I am receiving the criticism, I respond to it calmly and I focus on the issue, not the emotion from the person. That definitely helps me maintain professionalism. And then I love sharing details on why they matter to me. It's about about spreading the passion, not just the information. And lastly, I make sure that I surround myself with people who also value excellence, and that has been a lifesaver. The old adage is, and I know I'm hacking this. Y'all know I don't don't know how to have a good saying or I'll hack a good saying, but we like to lift each other up. With all that said, when you find your tribe, it's iron that sharpens iron, and you lift each other up. My journey towards a detail-oriented life in a world that often embraces the average has been challenging, to say the least, but it's been incredibly rewarding. Remember, it's about setting your own standards and you living up to them. And by doing so, you're not just achieving excellence, you literally are creating a life you can look back on with pride and satisfaction. I challenge you to keep pushing the boundaries, keep showing up in the world in excellence and all this detailed glory. And it's not only possible, but it's deeply fulfilling. Celebrate the joy of doing things well, one detail at a time. Thank you for joining us this time on the Messy Mind Podcast. Please visit our website at the Messy Mind Pod. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate a rating on Apple Podcasts or simply tell a friend about the show. Always remember to embrace the messiness, 
it can lead to your light bulb moments.